Hebrews chapter 3, I read from the New International Version, I read verses 1, probably down to verse 6. What's that? What's that name? Can't be. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, it's in the movie. <laughs> Therefore, holy brothers who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of the house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be said in the future, but Christ is faithful as a son over God's house, and we are his house if we hold on to our courage and the hope of which we boast. You may be seated. A preacher wants to park his car in a no parking zone uh, in a large city because he was short on time and he couldn't find a space uh, with a meter. And then he put a note on the, the windshield wiper of his car which read, I have circled the block for 10 times. If I don't park here, I'll miss my appointment. Forgive us our trespasses. But when he returned, he found a citation from a police officer along with this note that read, I have circled this block for 10 years, and if I don't give you a ticket, I'll lose my job. Lead us not into temptation. <laughs> there is a story of a pastor who got up one Sunday morning and announced to his congregation, he said, I've got some good news and some bad news. He said, the good news is we have enough money to pay for our building program. And then he said, the bad news is it's still out here in your pockets. And interestingly, in terms of what this church needs and all ministries need, and the issues that you need and what we're going through during uh, this time and ebb in our country is we need to facilitate the gospel, but it takes more than mouth service. Legitimately, it takes not only our physical and mental strength, but it also takes our cash flow. The question is tonight, and not the question, but really a point itself, point number one, we are who we are. And what I'm trying to say to you is, we are the children of God, we are saints, that kind of a thing, and it's a wonderful place to be in our lives. But even more so, I want you to know that we are the people of God and we're the saints of God because of a particular nugget that we possess. And that is, as people of God, we have faith. And we don't have faith in ourselves. Listen, we're just wasting time. You know, uh, somebody was looking at television today, was looking at a program. And uh, my, my wife was telling me this. This is what it was. She was sharing with me about the fact that uh, Whitney Houston uh, was on TV. I think it was yesterday. She was on, well, it was the day before yesterday. Was it yesterday? She was on Monday. She was on the Monday with Oprah. And uh, she said, Every time you heard Whitney, you know, Whitney is making a comeback, and that's a marvelous thing. But whenever you would hear Whitney retorting and responding to Oprah, she would always be talking about her deliverance and her being restored and her coming back, a net result of God. A net result of God. Now, uh, if you know anything about Oprah, Oprah is a, uh, how would you say it, a universal lady? And people like Oprah, and uh, I hope you're not like that tonight, they believe in the God that is in them. But our God is bigger than that. Uh, 
He's just God in me. You know, it, it, I'm, it's too, too limited. You know what I mean? The old folk knew how to put it. They said he's so high, you can't get over him. He's so low, you can't get under him. He's so what? You can't get around him. You must come in by the door. But I'm trying to tell you the reason why we are where we are tonight, and yet it is not without struggle, and the reason why you will become what you will be become, and you will become what you will become, is not because of who we are, but because of who he is. And why we're here tonight, and the reason why we take time out to refresh each other, and to encourage each other, to exhort each other, is because our faith in God. We have stated the claim, and we back up our claim tonight. We said to one another that we love each other, but the Bible says that we must love God, but you can't love God whom you've never seen without loving your brother. It is not only a horizontal relationship, but it's a vertical relationship. It's not only a vertical relationship, but it has to be a horizontal relationship. And the Bible says that if we love him and we love one another, that God himself through Christ will not deny us. Well, deny us what? Himself and deny us the things that are necessary to facilitate the work of the kingdom. He will take you from transition, through transition, let me say it like that, through transition to manifestation. In other words, you are in process. That's what Alfred North Whitehead used to call it, process. You are becoming something. You are striving to become something. But you don't have to worry about it because if God opens a door, can't nobody close it. Yeah, you know, it's interesting tonight that we are here tonight. We could be elsewhere. I heard your wife say that, and that, that was so true. But we're where we are tonight because God chose us. Yeah, he's put his hands on us. Uh, remember what John said in chapter 15 and verse 16. You didn't choose me, <laughs> but I chose you. And not only did I choose you, but I have appointed you so that you will go and bear fruit. But not just fruit, you know, some fruit when it comes off the vine. I was looking at some peaches the other day, and I saw the bees on it, and I saw that they were messed up because they had ripened early. But some fruit falls to the ground, and when it falls to the ground, it is messed up. You know what I mean? There are worms in it and all that kind of a thing. But you're not a wormy Christian. You know, you can't become putrid. Uh, you won't mess up. You won't fall from the vine too quickly. Because God has his hands on you, and God is in you, and God has to manifest his purpose, and he doesn't do it ahead of time, and he does not abort his product. Have I got a witness tonight? Father will give you whatever you need. All you have to do is ask him in his name. You and I are not here by accident. The li our lives have been planned by Almighty God. And God put us on the earth to do something. Young man, I appreciate that card tonight. Know what you're doing. That's a wonderful thing. We're not here just to, you got to have impact. Uh, you know, I can impart tonight. I'm standing here, and I'm giving an impartation. But the impartation means nothing if it doesn't have impact. I can impart. But only God can impact. You can work and do whatever you want to do, but it won't, it won't become prosperous. And it will not become thrilling, and it will not become fulfilling unless God puts his hands on it. Have I got a witness? See, we were destined. God made us to make a, make a difference. And the difference we wrought is a matter of our faith. Now let's talk about what faith is. Adrian Rogers penned an acronym for faith. I like his acronym. Adrian Rogers said faith, F-A-I-T-H, is forsaking all I trust.
us him. Forsaking, come on, talk to me. All I trust. Y'all not talking to me. Forsaking. I trust him. Hallelujah. You see, he has to be the number one priority in our lives. I, you know, I, I know, you know, listen, we have a lot of priorities. Uh, birds of a feather flock together, I know that. And uh, I know this thing about blood is thicker than water. You know, uh, the reason why he was my mama's God, well, that's all right, too. And he was my daddy's, my grand. no, 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 no. He has to become a priority for you. And the reason why uh, the church is not as strong, not your church, but I mean it's in process, as it ought to be is because we have people in the church who have various priorities. Yeah, various priorities. Uh, you know, they said they love the Lord. That's what they, I said that's what they said. You ain't talking to me. I said they said they love the Lord. But when Bud calls and when Cuz calls and when somebody else calls, they turn aside to do what Bud and so. But your number one priority should be to do the will of the Lord. Forsaking all I Trust him. And God says to us in Hebrews 11, you know, I don't preach long. I hope I don't preach long tonight. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And those who come to him must believe that he what? Exists. And that he is what? A what? A what? Of those who diligently seek him. Uh, many years ago when I was in uh, uh, graduate school, I never will forget I read the works of Martin Luther. And I don't know if I read this, but Martin Luther said uh, something like this. It was the most uh, moving uh, statement I have ever read, I think. He said, oh, for a faith. Oh, for, y'all better hear me. Oh, for a faith that will not shrink, though oppressed by every foe. Now, that's a heavy statement, y'all, but listen to that. Oh, for a faith. God, give me a faith that will not back down, that will not give up, though oppressed by every foe. And if you serve God, you're going to be tried. If you serve God, you're going to have struggle. If you serve God, you're going to have a contest. But the beautiful thing about it, if you hold on, you will have conquest. This is what I mean by faith. Lord, I want to thank you for my strength. Now, that's, that's faith. Lord, thank you for my strength. Lord, thank you for pre pre perseverance. Lord, thank you for forbearance. Lord, thank you for persistence. Lord, thank you. Now, listen to me. Thank you for staying power. Lord, thank you for resolution. Lord, thank you for constitution. Thank you for capacity. Thank you for willpower. Thank you, Lord, for tenacity. Now, now, you know, I said all that. You think it's a whole lot, but it ain't much. All I'm saying is what the old folk used to say. Lord, I want to thank you for allowing me to keep on keeping on. That's all it is. Hallelujah. Now, notice the text that I read in your hearing tonight. It starts out by saying, therefore, holy, holy brothers. Notice.
notice what you're talking about, going from transition to manifestation. Listen to the first word, transition, change. Is that what that means? Uh huh. It means, you know, going from one place to a another. And when getting to the other place, there has got to be a what? Manifestation. Yeah, but listen to what he said. I, I like the way he starts it. He says, in effect, holy. Now, the word holy comes from the Greek word hagios, which means that you've been set apart. Uh huh. You have been suited, or you have been, uh, you have sacred character. Uh, we are born into Christ, and when we are born into Christ, listen, don't, don't, don't get upset with when I said this, but this is true. When you're born into the Lord Jesus Christ, you are born into nobility. Now, what I'm trying to say to you is, you don't act common. You don't act like you're from the hood. You don't act ghetto-ish. You may be in it, but you're there to bring it from transition. Uh-huh. See, we are born into Christ, and that means that we are different. What I'm trying to tell you, we are not freaks, and we are not geeks, but God has given us a marked distinction. Now, what I'm trying to say to you is we don't feel like we're better than anybody else. We know we're not better than anybody else, but God has picked us up. He has given us status. He has elevated us so that we can lift. Yeah, so our distinctive is our culture. Uh, let's share uh, the culture of this age versus our culture. Let, let, let me just read it. You don't mind me reading the Bible, do you? Here it is. Let me talk about the culture of this age. Uh, Galatians 5, 17. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the, to, to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, now, let's look at the culture uh, of, of the world, of the age. Uh, y'all don't mind me talking about this because y'all ain't here. You used to be, we used to be, here it is. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality. Impurity. And debauchery. Idolatry. And witchcraft. Hatred. Discord. Jealousy, fits of rage, Lord help me tonight, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Come on, talk to me. That's the age and the acts of the natural culture, not in the body of Christ. The reason why it's not, well, I shouldn't say that. I, I know you all know I'm just talking. I don't mean I'm talking because it's in the book. But what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to say that we are to be, you know, a hedge above. I mean, uh, that, that used to be. Uh, you know, wasn't that what Paul said? Such were some of you. That's the way it used to be. Uh, now, I, I, I know it's, it's problematic. Give me a little more mic, son. Give me a little more mic back there. I, I need to be heard a little louder. Give me just a little more. Give me a little more volume. Yeah, let, 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 let me hear myself. You see, uh, 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 the church is supposed to make an impact in the world. Uh, and the church is supposed to bring, you know, some grace. That girl danced on that tonight, didn't she? Some grace uh, to people. You know what I mean? Uh, grace is a gift. Some cherish, you know, some good stuff, uh, some evidence, you know. They said the proof is in the pudding, and the, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. And, and the issue is that we are not to be conformed to this world, but we are to be what? By what? The 
something wrong with that picture. Yeah, the beauty of, uh, of not having been raised. You know, some of us were not raised in a, a nuclear family. And I'm not talking about with a father or mother, that kind of a thing. Uh, naturally, uh, it makes it a little easier to accept or to gravitate to others as primary family members. That's what's happening with these kids out in the street now. But the power of the new birth, thank God for the new birth, is that we are carried into a union with people who have like passion and have like commitment. We are grafted, grafted into the vine, and Jesus is the vine dresser, and God is the Father. And before a person can make any mark in life, he has to be affirmed. I'm talking about the affirmation is not only affirmation from out there, but it's self-affirmation. See, see, you ought to feel good about yourself. I say you ought to feel good. Don't make me preach so hard now. You ought to feel good about yourself. And, and, and you ought to know who you are in Christ Jesus. You ought to know who you are so that you can affect people in a different way. Thirdly, what we live for. Well, we live for more than what we think we live for. Every time we look around, there is a sphere of the heavenly benefit. Well, what I mean is that God has given us something that somebody ought to want to duplicate. You see, without an agent, there can be no author. And without an originator, please, there can be no duplication. For the heavens still declare the glory of the Lord, and the earth showeth forth his handiwork. And day and the day utter it speech. And there is no place that his voice is not being heard. I came here tonight, but I didn't come to tell you too much. But I just want you to know, my brother and my brother and my sisters, that we own the same king. And we're working for the same Lord. And the God who brought me here tonight. And I know you don't know much about me, but you don't need to know. But I just need to tell you tonight that uh, if God uh, has blessed me, I said, give me some more mics so I can hear myself. If the Lord has blessed me, I promise you that if he changed my course and if he evidenced himself in the lives of the people I lead, I promise you what the word said, that my God uh, is no respecter of person. And if God can bless me in New England, uh, tell me what can he do here? There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Have I got a witness tonight? I, I know I'm taking up a little of your time, but I want you to know I'm a little hungry tonight. And uh, I've been had a little sign of sisters. Forget all of that. But I came here to tell you that the God of Abraham is my God. And the God of Isaac is my God. And the God of Jacob is my God. And I want you to know that my God is still a rewarder. What I mean when I said he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him is that he's a God who gives benefits. Have I got a witness? I like that. He doesn't treat me just like he treats everybody else. He does that for me. But you remember what Jesus said, uh, and your fathers who are evil, uh, and they know how to give you good gifts, but how much more will your Father in heaven give you if you'll only ask him? So God has blessed me more than enough because he said, ask and it shall be given up. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. I want you to know tonight that I am a living witness that my God does just what he said. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 
listening to you tonight, many person, male and female, you've had two strokes, and some of them have been totally paralyzed by one stroke. Some can't see, and some can't move their body, and some can't talk, and others are vegetables tonight. But God is a rewarder of those who diligently see him. He's made you a model of his word. I am the Lord God, thou healer. Have I got a witness tonight? There is nothing. There is nothing impossible. Come on, children. Come on. Come on. There is nothing impossible to those who believe. 